know, it's funny. I know that, you know, Ari Shafir, I knew you, Rogan, that you guys love pot. You guys love pot the way that when I was in high school, I loved pot. Something happened over the years, and I've talked to other people. I know Bill Maher loves pot. When I was in high school, I think I was 14 years old, 1969. That's when I first got turned on to marijuana. And it was, uh, you know, the end of the big hippie era, but it was still, it was marijuana. I mean, it's like an illicit thing. You're 14. And by the time I was 15 or 16, I couldn't get through a day of school. God forbid to go to a Yankee game or a concert at the Academy of Music. I mean, the idea of going to a movie without pot, making it through a whole... I mean, I would scrape resin. Remember doing that? Scrape resin out of a, out of a hash pipe. Oh, I did I'd all that shit. smoke seeds and stems of anything, anything to even simulate getting high. And then all of a sudden, when I hit my early 20s, and blow took over from there. And alcohol, I mean, it was like those things, but for some reason, pot, you know, my body started making started me really paranoid. I know everybody, you guys smoke it, relax you. I started getting uptight, thinking about all my problems, we stuff up my sinuses. Unlike blow, because my body works in mysterious ways, I do a line, I'd relax, maybe it's like Ritalin for a hyperactive ADD, you know, kid, but I'd, it would clear my sinuses out. It would be the exact opposite, what pot should be doing to me. Coke did for me. Coke did for you. So every, but once every six months, I decide, I'm hanging out with a guy like you, or, you know, up in Montreal, Ari Shafir, or something, I'll take a hit of pot. Go, well, maybe, maybe this is better pot than what I had. Maybe I've changed. Way like a little kid, well, I used to hate broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Maybe it'll be a whole awakening now. I love pot and Brussels sprouts. So, and I'd smoke a joint, uh, or my daughter's boyfriend would come over, and I realized that now the pot, when we thought we were getting great stuff back in the old days, you know, Pecos, Acapulco Gold, that's garbage compared to what garbage. they're making now. So all you need is a hit of that shit, as you know, and you are fucking, fucking flying, 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 man. They had Acapulco Gold at, at the weed store where I go. Yeah. I go, what is that? Because it was expensive weed for the, that store. Right. And I go, let me see that. And it smelled like dick. People have no idea. Panama Red. Panama I mean, Red. That, that was a big early, gold. early 70s. Pecos. And, you know, this, and then, of course, Thai Stick, which is state of the art. is now like, yeah, Thai Stick. See, I don't remember Pecos. I came around when it was like uh, it wasn't just around. regular weed. And yeah. then I had a buddy who used to get gold weed. Right. And we paid a nickel bag back then. Right. Was, but for gold weed, like 20 bucks a bag. you paid 20 bucks a bag. And that was just a fortune. People don't oh understand my God. how much money that and was. And it was seedy. Yeah. And you'd only get like four joints. Right. But oh Did my God. Did names actually mean something when they were dealers? Yes. Acapulco okay. Gold. It was Panama gold. Panama Red it was, was red. like a reddish brown yeah. weed that fucked you up. Yeah. And then you had Thai Stick, which is a weed that was put on a stick. And it was rolled with a twine. Right. And you can I mean, smell it from a mile away. Oh, now, Jesus. Now, pot, you can smell from 10 miles away, and it's twice as good as that stuff. I used to, I remember like how the, uh, you know, you sm when I was like 16, I smoked regular stuff. And then a buddy of mine that worked at Levy Sporting Goods used to get chocolate tie weed. And we used to call it chocolate traumatized. <laughs> because it would traumatize. It really would. You forgot shit. You lost your money. And then I had another, I had a teacher in high school who was in charge of building the sets for plays. Yep. <clears throat> and if you were part of that, they gave you 15 credits per school year because you worked on with your hands and built shit. It's a lot of credits. But at the time, that dumb motherfucker was getting orders from people, and he would get weed sent up from Hawaii. And again, we were paying $5. Gold was 20 bucks. This shit was like $35. Right, right, right. And it was tremendous. You know, the first time I tried the real pharmaceutical stuff, I went into one of those places. Because as you know, you can't go back there and look at the goods unless you have a prescription. So a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, my wife had shingles, which I hear now is the most painful, horrible thing. Horrible. And she tried everything. And she tried every kind of painkiller. She tried everything. Everybody recommended, oh, take this and try the homeopathic and try the other. Nothing worked. So a friend of mine said, listen, you know, I hear if you get some hash oil, they make it kind now. Uh, a friend of mine had shingles. You get this hash oil. doesn't get you high because there are different strains right, that CBDs. you know for different things, which I still can. You got the sativa. You get the uh, indigo. Yeah. The and I never knew how that worked. But I guess it's like how Advil and Esper knows what part of the body to go to. Right. Like, oh, Paul Reiser, but I'm doing it. Anyway, so I take her down. She gets a prescription, which is so easy to get. And... Uh, so she goes in, the guy gives her some oil, goes, you're not going to get high from this, because my wife's like me. She doesn't really like the, what it does to her. And she took some of the oil and uh, just a couple of drops, and it didn't really help her much, but she got stoned out of her mind for two days and hated it. I go, what a pussy. Let me try this stuff. And I tried it, and you know what? I got a little buzz, but it wasn't really, I didn't like it at all either. So about a month ago, I'm in Denver, you know, Colorado, where anybody can walk in like a candy store and go buy something. And I said, you know, even though I don't smoke this anymore, I got to go. Go in. Yeah. I got to go Just in. I got see. for old, but no, but I got to get some for old time's sake. And I went in and I said to the guy, look, I don't really like getting stoned anymore. I explained to him everything I just told you. But I hear that there's, you know, a strain you could buy, the indigo, whatever, indigo. And I said, you can get it. I said, I like to relax because I get the metabolism of a hummingbird. 
So for 15 bucks, he goes, smoke one of these, because you probably don't even need the whole thing. It'll relax you. It'll be great. So I go back to my hotel, and I lit the joint, and I took a couple of hits and nothing happened. And I took a couple of more hits, and I go, well, okay, I'm a little relaxed. And, and then I thought, you know what? This is not good. This is like my, uh, you know, cutting the hair of Samson. This is like throwing water on the w- Wicked Witch. If I start to relax, my comedy chops will be gone, you know? I won't, I won't get mad at somebody that doesn't make a right turn on a red light. I won't be pissed at people. I w- and, I, and, I, and I said, you know what? This, uh, vodka will do the same thing. I don't need this shit. I should have brought it for you because you probably could. Uh, next time I come to do your, your podcast next year.